Good morning, my dear brethren. May the Lord bless you. Welcome to today's devotional. We're going to be going to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, as of verse 15 on. The word of the Lord says the following. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by a pistol. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God our Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Once again, Paul is addressing the church in Thessaloniki, asking them firmness, firmness in the, in the faith, in the doctrine, firmness in the public testimony, in essence, just maturity and sobriety, which are elements that are necessary to be able to live Christian lives in victory, and so that the church can be impact the world and not the world impacting and changing the, the church. There's so many, so much emotionalism in the environment, people that are offended about everything that is said to them or done to them. There's so much lack of maturity that all of that, the only thing that it brings is the weakness of the church, the bad testimony, the lack of firmness, the lack of constancy, the ignorance of the scriptures. All of this, what brings is that the church is taken from one place to the other, maybe sometimes by fashions and emotions and feelings, and not directed by the word of God and by his Holy Spirit. Paul is saying, retain the sound doctrine. Maintain firm in what you have received, whether it's receiving from his lips or through one of the letters that he wrote to this church. In other words, take every advantage of the opportunities that God is giving you to learn, to grow, to mature, to be able to serve the Lord. It is incredible to see how there are believers that waste their time and the opportunities that every day are presented to them by the Lord to get close to Him, to learn something new from His Word, to be prepared and able to do the work that the Lord has called us to. And then we see other people with less time in the Gospel that they demonstrate more interest to learn and to serve the Lord than believers who have years, not to say all their lives, in one or several churches. My dear brethren, this message that the Lord is giving to the church through the ministry of the Apostle Paul about the importance of standing firm in the Lord to retain the sound doctrine they have learned is in full force now. Exactly the same the Lord is telling you and I today that we have to put deep roots in the Lord so that we do not let our faith go down and are encouraged just uh, to and desire to serve the Lord so that we don't get entangled of the things of the world, forgetting what is the essence and the essential thing, which is to love and obey the Lord. The consequences of disobedience, the consequences of not being a mature person in the ways of the Lord, in short and long term, are terrible. However, the people who take seriously their relationship with the Lord and the people who search the Word every day to obtain answers, to know how to behave during these difficult times in which we're living now, are people that have messages to give. They're not people who are always demanding attention, but on the contrary, they're people who have a message, have something to do and contribute to others. They hardly get discouraged, they hardly get depressed because they don't even have time for that. But they're involved in the things of the Lord, their minds, their thoughts, their lives revolves around the, the Lord and they don't want the Lord to revolve around them, which is one of the typical signs of the people that are immature, people that are always demanding attention, people that when they don't receive that call, that word, or that recognition, they collapse and they get discouraged and they come down because they're just driven by emotions and they're always calling attention and demanding attention instead of being on another level to be worried or occupied, if I may say, 
in the lives of others and not so much in themselves. The lack of maturity is often due to lack of knowledge, because the biblical knowledge to know the sacred scriptures well, to know the sound doctrine, and to maintain in it will allow us to know our God better. And as we know how the Lord acts and what does He want from us and what does He abhor and what He hates and what He loves, then we will be able to serve Him better and, and more than anything to discern and know the will of God. It is a tragedy that there are Christians that have uh, years in the gospel and they don't know what their place is. They don't know what the will of God in their lives is. They are from one place to other, another. They're, they fluctuate from one way to another and move by systems, by men. But they don't know what God wants from them and what they can do to serve God, to, to grow the church and, uh, and the work of the Lord. Therefore, my dear brethren, let's pay attention to these exhortations that the Lord is giving through the pen of Paul to be firm. Also, he told that to the Corinthians, and he's saying that today to us. Retain the doctrine, know it well, share it well, not to add anything, personal opinions, let's say things that seem that I think they are true, but in the light of the Word of God, they're not really like that. To retain the doctrine like we have learned it, how we have received it, I repeat, even though we have received it well without being mixed or adultered with other things. But that sound doctrine that is only based on the Word of God and not in books and opinions of men, of commandments and traditions of people, of groups, but only and exclusively aligned to the Word. And then, in verse 17, it says that we have read this morning that He's going to comfort our hearts and He's going to confirm He's going to support the work that we're doing for Him. That is, that our comfort and our support and our, comes from the Lord. It does not come from the president of the denomination or the pastor of the church or a brother that we love and appreciate a lot and we hope that he will support us and, and love us. None, my dear brethren. Our coverage comes from above. It is useless to have a human coverage if we do not have a heavenly coverage, a divine coverage, which is our gods. It's useless to have a card or a diploma or, or a, a plate or anything that we can use to say, we, I have the coverage of certain ministry, of certain pastor. If we don't have the endorsement and support from our God, which is the one that we really need and is the one that we, that we really what it really counts when we say God is supporting me and when God is supporting us when God sees the blessing of God in the things that we see for him because we do them according to his design according to his will then that brings joy that brings peace that brings tranquility to our hearts and there is where the joy comes because we know that we're in the center of the will of God Problems may come, difficulties will come, and test, and in short, everything that you want to mention. But I am calm, I am sure, I am at peace, because I know that I have the support of my God and the covering of heaven. And that is what each one of us have to yearn to have all the days of our lives. Not, do not seek outside the Lord. In men, the only thing that you can obtain in the Lord So therefore, my dear brethren, today we're going to ask these two things to the Lord, that He will give, give us firmness and stability in our lives, and that we can retain the sound doctrine all the days of our lives. And if we have the opportunity to give a class to the children, to the young people, to go to the public and, and, and pray and share the Word of God, to do so knowing that we have the support of God because it is useless if we have the support from men, if we don't have the support from God. Let's pray this morning, asking Him these things to our God. Heaven, Heavenly Father, thank You, because every day You speak to us and minister to us through Your holy and powerful Word. Today we're asking You, Lord, that You will keep us firm in Your ways. 
that we will have deep roots in your word, that we can know and retain the sound doctrine in our lives, that every day that we do something for you, we will see that you support it, that you give us support because we're not working and we're not moving in the flesh by emotions, by feelings, by calling attention to others, but only to give you honor and glory to you alone. Keep us from all evil and all danger and all bad influence and all bad friendship and all bad thought and that today our objective will be to please honor and serve you only use our lives and bring that maturity and that firmness that only you can produce in us thank you lord for everything in the name in the blessed name of jesus amen and amen well my dear brethren may the lord bless you this week we're still in Tenerife sharing uh, from this island the, um, the devotional. Next week, Lord willing, we will be already in our retreat. We will probably be recording in outdoors in, or maybe in the Congress itself, the devotionals that we'll be sharing with you every morning. Pray that so that this Congress will be a great blessing and that we can receive the word that the Lord has prepared for us and to have that communion between us that is so important and so necessary. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you. Blessings. We continue serving and striving for the work of the Lord. May the Lord bless you.